Hello and welcome to FLF Topics and Metaphysics. This is Cyrus. Tonight we're talking about the concept that is it possible people who are very skeptical of the world around them on this side cross over and in, in place of being a skeptic of the afterlife, they become a skeptic of the earth plane. Pretty wild, uh, interesting concept, which I guess kind of fits in with human psychology. But let me back up a little bit in case you're new around here. So we talk about the nuts and bolts of what conditions appear to be like on the other side on this channel and uh, kind of greater spiritual concepts as well and tonight we're delving into uh, Michael Time's blog. Michael Time is an afterlife researcher, afterlife chronicler and his blog is a uh, is a library of information concerning this subject compiling um, vast amounts of information from spiritualist books, uh, sources from credible mediumship and analysis about what is contained in those sources. So this was a m most recent blog entry which is scientists who don't know that earth exists. And it's kind of kind of more like a conceptual argument. There's one um, kind of anecdote about this which I'll read off and then um, we'll hear my my opinion about this. So uh, the blog article begins, so uh, Time says, as discussed in his book called The Afterlife Revealed, which is a book by Michael Time, the author, uh, rather the, um, the writer behind this blog, who again is one of the foremost experts on what happens when you kick the bucket. Uh, he says, there have been numerous messages and signs from the spirit world indicating that many spirits are slow in recognizing that they are, quote, dead, some floundering in an earthbound stupor for a long time. However, time, rather, however, time is measured in that apparently lower realm. This phenomenon was popularized in the hit 1999 film The Sixth Sense, when the Bruce Willis character apparently didn't know that he had died. Of course, I think real life is pretty different from The Sixth Sense, which was um, definitely exaggerating things or using Hollywood spectacle. Um, I can get into that some other time. But anyway, so uh, time continues. A somewhat different twist on afterlife awareness is offered in a 1954 book called Through the Psychic Door by Dr. Frederick H. Wood, a professional musician and composer who heard from a number of departed souls in the afterlife through the mediumship of a woman given the pseudonym of Rosemary to protect her privacy. In one message around 1950, Wood's deceased brother Dennis, who had passed away in 1912, told Frederick that he, Frederick, uh, dies and joins him in spirit world that he is going to arrange for him to give a lecture to a group of scientists on his side about the reality of the earth world. Dennis explained that many scientists on his side do not believe that there is such a place as the earth. Apparently these are the same scientists who refuse to believe in a spirit world when they were in their physical bodies. Whether or not Dennis Wood was jesting is not clear, but it does seem clear from many messages coming from the spirit world that the consciousness we awaken with on that side is based on the spiritual consciousness we take with us from the physical world. In other words, um, our awareness of that side will in some ways affect our conditions on that side. If we live in complete denial of higher dimensional realms of existence, we may face problems on that side. So in this way, I want to talk about how, first I want to go into how I think science can be a, this double-edged sword, but I also want to talk about some of my own experiences concerning this, I think, very humorous subject. Before we go any further, you are watching Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, where we, where we uh, try to tackle the so-called untackleable. There's probably not many places out there, especially on YouTube, that analyzes this information concerning all of our ultimate fate, ultimate destinies. Uh, if you like this stuff and want to support the work, you can sign up as a sub, uh, rather you can join as a subscriber, which of course is free. Just click the big subscribe button. You can also support the work as a patron over at the Patreon page. And also want to give a special thanks to you guys who have been signing up as patrons to help me going. If you help me keep this going, if you are a patron, 
feel free to shoot me a message, talk to me on the Patreon page or on Facebook or wherever you want to get in touch with me. I receive lots of emails every day from people concerning this topic and sometimes very specific questions about the other side. And it's physically impossible for me to answer all of those questions, but I do prioritize patrons. So if you are a patron of this work, I will always take time out to talk to you and answer any questions, sometimes even do custom videos if you want. So <clears throat> to continue on this pretty uh, wonky subject of basically skeptical scientists on that side doubting that this world exists. So the scientific method is a way of understanding, I would say, objective reality. This is why I'm a big fan of the scientific method because I am a big fan of objective reality. It's so easy to get caught up into subjective reality. Certain conspiracies do this, for example, flat earth. Somebody can convince, them, convince themselves of a reality that is not objective and that reality in some ways can be very real for that person. On the other side, where the mental and the physical tend to blend together, I think it's possible that fantasies can become someone's more literal reality, or they can sort of digress into a dream state. Because of this, I think on this side and in higher dimensional planes of existence, both of these environments heavily depend on science to make sense of the world around you so that you can get an idea what is objectively happening for everybody, uh, rather than what is just happening inside of my own head. And so um, for that reason, we have to use science. For this, uh, in this world, we need science so we can objectively gather information and know how to um, help ourselves, heal ourselves, advance and progress. We cannot progress if one thing works for one person and doesn't work for anybody else. You need blind studies, trials, control groups, and the scientific method. Science is a double-edged blade because some people love science so much it becomes their personal philosophy. Nothing can exist or be real unless it can be objectively verified using strict processes of control and, um, and blinded studies, whatever it may be. Uh, so these are people who refuse to believe anything that you can't put in a glass tube under a microscope. So this philosophy can be very dangerous because it will uh, make you doubt things that you, just because you personally do not have access to them. In some ways, it's like it comes full circle and the, uh, the focus on objectivity starts to become subjective all over again. People in this world who deny the existence of higher realms, the spirit world, whatever you want, heaven, whatever you want to call it, um, they... Are, they are very much um, prescribing to a belief that something can't be real unless they can look at it un through, through an uh, instrument, a telescope, a microscope, whatnot. And, uh, and so you, 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 there's no room at all to fill the gaps with any kind of belief or any kind of simplification of a phenomenon. Let me just turn my internet off real quick. I apologize if you heard any like Facebook beeps going off. Sometimes it happens if I forget to turn the internet off. And I'm sure it's super annoying if you're watching a video and you think somebody's messaging you, but it's just me. Anyway, so um, as I was saying, you know, so this um, this issue is, um, you know, really comes to light if, when you see like the hardcore skeptics of everything, you know, the uh, people who are like anti-paranormalists, paranormal deniers who will run against the grain of thousands of years of data and personal experience and stories and and even some level of scientific methodology just because they can't walk outside onto their porch and look at it through a telescope then they believe it can't be real which again that is actually a very subjective way of looking at things or trying to understand things because you're just saying that unless it unless it passes through my personal barrier of skepticism it, it does not and cannot exist which um, things can exist regardless of whether or not you personally have verified them. So anyway, so this becomes a belief system known by some people as uh, scientism, so scientism, scientism. And I think it's a very, very problematic way of looking at the world. So it doesn't really surprise me that people on this side of, of the veil who deny the existence of anything beyond this realm of existence cross over and then take that attitude with them. 
And I think this can manifest in two different ways. So one way it can manifest is people end up on that side and they convince themselves that they never died and that they are still on this, this earth and that they are still mortals and that the afterlife still doesn't exist. I'm aware of people entering this kind of de denial. I think eventually they do snap out of it and then you end up with the other extreme which is existing on that side carrying with you that strict scientism philosophy and deciding or determining that the earth plane doesn't exist because when you flip between these two dimensional realities uh, there's, there's, it's very similar, you know, going looking from that side of the veil toward this side of the veil, and vice versa. Uh, it's both uh, two different, uh, two dimensionally different frequencies of existence, which you cannot access or see or feel normally unless you have perhaps a very, very well tuned equipment on whether it's on this side of the veil or that side of the veil. So when you're on that side, you can only access this plane if you kind of do what we do here. So here we can practice astral projection to occasionally project our consciousness to that side of the veil and even materialize into a form, interact with people, gather information and bring it back, which is something that I do. And actually a lot of people do, uh, are able to do this. But uh, on that side, they practice a similar thing to get over here. Again, they have to kind of transfer their mind, transfer their consciousness to us, project themselves to this side, appear into our world. And when it's all over, just like here, they may be second guessing themselves and wondering, was it, did it really happen? Was it some kind of dream or hallucination? Uh, believe on that side, they have more advanced methodologies of coming here and making contact with us, including higher dimensional beings who can sort of open um, doorways and portals and be able to come into the near Earth astral plane to make a contact with us. So I definitely think it's more verifiable. Excuse me. It's more verifiable than it is uh, the other way around. But it's uh, still not something you can immediately see, feel, touch, or you know, step on your deck and you know, use use a common instrument to observe. So people heavily caught up in scientism could end up very ironically, in a, in a very amusing way, denying the existence of the Earth plane. Now, a couple notes about my own experiences. So I've personally attempted to gather little bits of experiences of a little bits of personal anecdotes about what the other side is like by going there through astral projection experiences. And uh, during these many, many trips I've had, you know, I chronicle them in diaries. I've written about the, the more unique ones in my books. But I, um, I recall basically a general attitude on that side of the veil about the existence here, which is that it's not so much that they are not aware that this place exists, but it's like to them, it becomes like a big dream. You know, they they are so engaged into their new mode of existence in the kind of um, semi-physical realm, which, you know, we all transition into. And they begin new lives, similar in some ways to the lives they had here. And more and more of this world, this reality, the life they had here fades into the background until they begin to refer to it as having been some kind of a weird dream. Some people seem to forget entirely, or maybe they never really had a life here to begin with and they're just a native of that world. But uh, indeed, there's people who range from having a full awareness of the life they had here to having limited awareness to having no awareness. And I think this actually really goes into the point I'm going to address in the next video coming up after this one concerning memories and um, having a lack of memories, which I think is uh, something that happens as well. The point being, as, as the memories of this world can sometimes fade or seem more distant, more like a dream, people who are heavily into science, scientism are going to begin to doubt its existence altogether. And I've never met somebody who doubted the existence of this world, but I've met many people on my, on my trips who have been surprised to find that I am from this world, that I can gain, that I can have full memory of that side and then come back to this side after and be able to talk about it. 
So I've had many, many experiences where I've explained this to people I've met there because that's usually the first thing I'm going to talk about. It's like, hi, my name is Cyrus. This is what I'm doing. I'm astral projecting. I have a little YouTube channel. I have a Facebook group. Please tell me about your world, your story, who you are, so I can bring the information back. And the, the, again, the reaction is usually quite a bit of surprise that um, they meet somebody who is able to do that because usually they have never met somebody like that. Some people even told me that they only know about this world through rumors. So it's not even something that's a part of their life. So it makes sense to me that people who are heavily vested into this philosophy of skepticism or scientism, that it becomes their whole method of viewing and understanding reality. They get to that side and then they flip it around. It's that, well, I don't believe in the existence of the earth plane. So what do you think? How do you get through to people like this? Have you ever had an experience like this? Do you think that people on that side uh, may be skeptical of this world as well? And um, what about the concept of people in the quote earthbound stupors who go to that side and seem to have no awareness or understanding that they ever even crossed over? and are discontinuing about their life as before and you still believe that they're mortals and uh, someday that they're going to die because I've also met people on my trips who have thought this as well. They've thought that they, uh, that, that they are still vulnerable mortal beings who have an expiration date because they didn't have a single spiritual bone in their bodies when they passed away and nobody can convince them otherwise. In a way, just like you know, denying that you're dead. Um, similar to Bruce Willis, but uh, unlike that film, I mean, they they can still be in a real environment. They're not just like floating around our world like voyeurs. They can you know be, you know be in their astral apartment, going to work at their crummy astral job, coming back and you know um, I don't know eating top top ramen for dinner and going to bed at night and not realizing that they are operating in a different whole plane of existence and still denying you know, that you know they, that anything has really changed. So what do you think about that? Um, how do you help those people? What, what, what do you do for people in situations like that? Just some questions to think about, but stay tuned for the next video coming up where we talk about issues of memory. Or you can go through the archives where many, many other subjects, topics like this are covered as we try to make sense of reality through these conversations. You can get involved at the Facebook group Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics or the Reddit group Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics at r slash Afterlife Topics. You can check out the website afterlifetopics.com and grab some books like Understanding Life After DEATH or The Afterlife and Beyond. All good material if you want something to research, study, and get involved in that I think is pertinent to all of us and uh, maybe even give you a little bit of uh, a little bit of inspiration while dealing with the endless lockdown that uh, I think is affecting most of the world still, including me in this uh, kind of dingy apartment here in Davao, Philippines, uh, day number, I don't know, month number two of my lockdown. Actually, it's been two months already. Uh, yeah, about two months so far of basically not being able to do anything except go to the grocery store on, on select days of the week and deal with Gestapo security guards who are on like power trips because of this whole crisis. It seems to happen a lot here in the Philippines. Uh, it's really annoying. I don't know why, you know, that's, I don't know why you give, give somebody just a little bit of authority or during a crisis and this all goes to their head. Strange, isn't it? Strange, the human condition. Anyway, enough out of me. I'll catch you guys on the next video.